Good morning, and welcome to Tuesday. Welcome to all those people that don't know who I am. My name is Mark Rosetto. I am one of the co-founders with Kylie Garner, who help run the Professional Photography Business Network. And I wanted to jump in this morning, specifically in the morning, because it's a morning Australian time. For those that didn't realize, yes, Australian accent coming from Brisbane. But I wanted to reach out to all those people in the US, and in Europe, it might be a bit too late now for you. But um, there is um, a whole lot of new people in here that I just wanted to reach out and say hello to. And there's a lot of new people to the photography industry as well. And I just think that there's a few very simple, basic comments and questions. And when people join the PBBN, they write down, what do you want to learn? And there's a few just simple things like about marketing. What does IPS stand for? Um, I'm new to business. Do I need a website? All those really kind of basic, simple things that we, uh, we talk about all the time. Hello, Isabel. Um, but for those people like, and this is a hard part. I've been doing this and coaching and training photographers all over the world since 2015. So actually, wow, it's coming to nine years. Nine years, look at that, that's crazy. Anyway, um, so I feel personally like I'm just repeating myself. It's the same information to the same people to the same thing every time. But then I got reminded the other day that, well, you know, I said something the other day and people were like, oh my gosh, that was amazing, like that was so good. And I was like, it's really basic. This is the basic stuff that you should know and you should be learning and you should be doing. Like, how, how are you running a business and you don't know the basics of basic stuff? So, I just wanted to quickly go through my photography business 101 with you. And Isabel, you've been around for quite a while, so I know that you've got some um, really cool insight with majority of this. But yeah, I just felt like I needed to come on in and say g'day. Now also for the record too, there was supposed to be a live webinar today for the new rules of business in 2024, um, but that had to be rescheduled to next week. Keep an eye out on this page and that information is going to come up pretty soon as well. So for starters, if you're here, please say hi. Please, you know, jump on the chat, say good morning or something, just so I know who's here um, and strap yourself in. Okay. Number one, um, business models that suit you. Now, the, the thing is though, not every business model suits every photographer because everybody has different um, lifestyle um, habits. They have different, they have kids, they don't have kids, they have pets, they don't have pets. Um, they've got little kids and babies to primary age kids, to senior kids, to no kids. And therefore also too, that your work in your business model is different as well. So you might be doing this part-time, you might be doing this full-time. Good morning, Sarah. You might be doing this for shits and giggles. You might be doing this because you want to, not because you have to. And the other reason you might be doing this is because you have to make a business out of it. So there's life factors to consider that is it a hobby or is it a full-time business? Um, are you, is it a solo income that you are the breadwinner in your photography business or is this um, the dual income? Uh, do you want to week, work weekends? Do you not want to work on weekends? So there's a few things that you need to kind of establish within your own photography business in the first place. And then you need to create the business around those different things. Because I can tell you now, and I've got examples till the cows come home, that there's some photographers that do this for shits and giggles. I know, shock horror. They run a photography business because they want to, not because they have to. So therefore, the business model that we set up for them is slightly different because those people sometimes have all their prices up front, loud and clear, and it's kind of like, if you book me, book me. If you don't book me, don't book me. I really don't care. And they have this little bit of a of like a badass attitude. Hello, Natalie. Good morning. Then other photographers are like, no, I need five shoots a week, so I need to make sure that we are um, going through a bit of a different business model and nurturing sequence to make sure that we capture we capture every single kind of lead. Um, I want to connect with them. I want to build relationships. I want to win them over. I want to shower them with love that they wouldn't want to book anywhere else. So 
there's different business models to suit different people. And I just want to quickly go through those different business models. One of them is um, like the online gallery, simplified, get them in, get them out kind of things. They're the people who you book online, the calendar's online. Good morning, Anya. Wow, it's early there um, in Perth. You book online. Everything's done online. You contact online. The shoot only goes for half an hour. You upload the images online. They get everything and job is done. You've spent two hours with the client and you're off and running with that. And that sounds amazing, but the uh, the level of your photography, not the skills, the level of your input on photography business can only charge a certain amount with doing that because it's so simplified. It's like a McDonald's. You're not gonna spend $20 on a burger at McDonald's but you'll spend $20 at a burger at a bistro because the experience and the quality and the service and that fine art um, workflow is put in place to charge a premium for that. So you need to figure out. The other side of this is that you have the photographer that you, um, the, you contact the photographer, you have an in-person sales meeting before you book a shoot in the first place. Then you have the photography shoot that goes for an hour or two. Then you have a design appointment in person where you go through the images and sit down with them. It's called in-person sales for those people that don't know. Now, due to COVID, one thing that COVID did for the ph photography industry that was amazing, that was just the best thing ever, made it okay to do Zoom calls as an in-person sales and said them coming back in the room. And I know Natalie, you jumped all over that, yet your sales still stayed really high, yet you could do them um, wearing your pajamas below the table type thing. So it's one of those, and, and that worked really well. So in-person sales is one of those things where you show the artwork, show your images to the client, and then you work through the images to pick and choose their favorite. It's a high level contact, high level uh, service so that you can choose artwork. And some people design the um, design the, the wedding album with, or the portrait album with them using Fundy, with my Fundy top, um, in front of them so there's no kind of guessing what the product is and, and they designing proper full you know, wall galleries and wall art, because let's be honest, if you're gonna drop 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 dollars, you're not probably gonna drop 5K on an online gallery very often, but you will do it in person because you wanna make sure that you've got the best things. Yeah, but I think it increased, decreased the product sales. Absolutely, this is exactly what I'm saying now. When you do things online, when you do things through the computer, when you do things through shoot proof or Pixie set or pick time or any of those, it does decrease the product sales. But on the flip side, it increased your profits because you're still charging the same, but it's just digital files only at the same time. So you've got to choose what business model suits you because you might have kids and families and you can only do certain days and certain times and it changes the way that you do things, all right? So choosing a business model is really important to make sure you get that right. The second one I'm gonna talk about is your products to suit your business model. You really need to make sure that your products are in line with your shooting style and your products are in line with your business model because again, if you're doing online sales and you're trying to sell wall art for three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, you're probably gonna struggle because people need to see it. So you need to make sure that your price list, which I'm gonna talk about next, complements your business model, which complements your products which makes it easy to sell and easy to buy. Confused Minds says uh, no. So we need to make sure that this is really simplified and your price list is easy to understand and you need to make sure that you need to identify, are you gonna use a Fundy, a Pro Select, a Shoot Proof, a Pixie Set, um, a Peak Time, all that type of thing, because then you need to dis define your business around that. All right. When choosing your products, you've got to be careful, and I'm going to link into price list here because there's no point having a product, right? Let me go through what there is. You've got two products here, okay? One 
is a timber portrait box which is from brilliant prints which is a little bit more premium you've got lid that comes up that see through plus you've got your matted prints here now those this is a really high quality product that we love but you also have the option of doing a print box from global image products that holds the same prints and the same sizes in the box, right? So now, what are they actually paying for? They're paying for packaging. The image is the same. The product, the actual finished artwork is the same, but the packaging is different. But the difference is this costs you, what? 50 bucks, something like that, where the timber one costs you double or triple that amount. So you need to make sure that if you're trying to sell products, you're selling it for the right prices. Now don't get into the trick of, but I want the best of everything and I want my clients to have the best and I wanna have the quality of the best, but then you're selling it at a cheaper price point. Because what's gonna happen is you're going to reduce your profits. The labs, they'll win because you're buying their stuff and they're like, you beauty. The client is gonna win because they're like, wow, this is a premium product at a cheaper price, but you as a photographer, you're profits are super low and you're getting left with not much profit in the middle so you need to make sure that you choose the right products to shoot the right business model for the right price list think of it like this let's go to the whiteboard because this is a bit of a three-way switch that you need to get right if you get this wrong you're just going to lose money if you get this right then you're going to go really well so let's just consider this circle here can you see that Excellent, is your business model. All right, so pink is a business model. Let's go to blue. This one here is, let's just say it's your price list. And then let's go purple. All right, let's go purple and purple is here, whoops trying to make these the same size and clearly it's not working for me. Ah, oh, you get the idea. And purple is your products. All right, so if you have a well-rounded business, good morning Paula, um, if you have a well-rounded business, you need to make sure that your business model suits your price list, your price list suits your products, your product suits your price list, your price list suits your business model and it goes as a three. Now, if you get all of this correct, and my daughter stole my other favorite colored pens, let's just go red. Um, if you get all this correct right, then you're ready to go to market because you know that whatever client gets through your door, you're going to make good money out of, all right? Because your time, efficiency, money is all being sorted. Now. Think of it this way. Think of your business model, product, price list and products as your ISO, your aperture, your shutter speed. Now, if you have <coughs> a ridiculously high ISO, like you're talking about thousands, high ISO, you can still work your shutter speed and your aperture to get a decent photo. It's gotta be grainy as all shit, but you're still gonna be able to take a photo. Is it the best quality photo? No, it's not. You could have a really low, low ISO, but have a really high aperture to get as much light in your camera as you possibly can. But your depth of field is gonna be just ginormous and it's not gonna be the best quality photo. Can you still take a photo? Yes, you can. What I'm getting at here, you can have a really shit business model and have a great price list and products. You can still run a business, but it's not gonna be uh, profitable. You can have a great business model with a great price list, but your products are wrong. You can still run a business, but it's not gonna be profitable. You can have a great business model and great products, but your prices are so cheap, or you've outpriced yourself, that it's not gonna be a great business model. So these three things need to work together to actually be a profitable, sustainable, quality photography business model, okay? That's my first three points. If you have any questions or comments on that, feel free to jump in. And yes, this might go for a little while, so grab a coffee, grab a water, whatever you need. 
we're still talking here. All right, so that's one of the things, like if you're new to business or new to photography or you might have changed your situation, kids are going to school, you have a new partner, you have a separated partner, you've moved to a new area, you're doing a new genre, you've made a change in your life. If you've made a change in your business, in your life, in your circumstances, and you've been photographing for five, 10, 15 years, whatever, right? And I know Natalie, you had a massive change in your business. Like, you have to rejig things a little bit to suit your current lifestyle and your business. If you're new to business, I had a great conversation with a guy in a Dublin of all places in um, Ireland. He's brand new to business. We had a coaching call, 20 minutes of free, it was awesome. He gets to set up everything the way he wants to. I had another great call with a guy named Mel. He's been in business for 10, 15 years. He's been traveling the world. He's been busy doing stuff. He's planning on having a kid soon. He wants to reset his business up in a way that's going to work for him. So again, he gets to rewrite his business model. So it's about doing things the right way the first time. Um, and yes, not, yeah, things are different, but they're working. You've just got to make it work for you, all right? But just be cautious that you want to have a business model that's going to make you money and not a business model that you're going to lose money out of um, as well. No one else has got anything to say. Everyone else is just sitting back and chilling out. Awesome. Good to see. All right. Number four, point number four, 101 of business is your website. Now, I can argue this until the cows come home of do you need a website? And a lot of new photographers, it's not photographers that have been around for a while. It's really only new photographers, right? But don't worry, old photographers, I've got something for you too. Yes, you need a professional photography website. Now, I've done research on certain things uh, lately that we're looking at, 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 at doing some renovations around the house, right? I was looking at buying a bike. I was looking at, whenever you're looking at buying anything, once you get the recommendation, you always want to land on a website because that's where you go to. So it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna write websites here. Actually, no, I'm gonna redo that in a different way to make it make more sense, sorry. It doesn't matter where your inquiry comes from. It doesn't matter if they come from Facebook, inquiry, inquiries from, from Facebook, they will land on your website. If it's from Instagram, I can guarantee they're going to land on your website. They've seen pretty photos, now they want some more information. If it's LinkedIn, they're gonna land on your website. If it's a referral, they're gonna go to your website. They might go to Facebook or Instagram, but they're gonna land on your website, right? If it, if you want a partner, and we did this call with the, um, the uh, third party alliances in the um, professional photography business network, the members group of the professional photographers, we spoke about third party alliances, right? They're not gonna, you know, the CEO of Mercedes Benz, BMW, Ray White, um, a, a pet store or something, they're not gonna go to your Instagram and go, oh my gosh, they look amazing, I wanna partner with them. They're not gonna go to that. They might go to your Instagram, but they will land on your website. Like, it's really, really important that your website is absolute key. And it's good that Kylie's redoing yours, Nat. I liked your website, Nat, it was great. Um, if it's a networking event, they'll land on your website. You get the idea, all right? So the key part is, is that you do need a website. Website is key. On top of that though, with your website, I'm gonna write content is king. The content on your website has to be awesome. Now, content is lots of different things. Pretty photos, yes, they see pretty photos on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and referral, like all that type of stuff in friends' houses and things. But on your website, there's a few things on your website, especially for 2024, that is going to make a massive difference. One of them is your copy. 
killer copy in 2024, what you write. There's a lot of photographers that take lots of pretty photos. There's a lot of them, let's be honest. There's a lot of photographers who take lots of pretty photos. But pretty photos, you know, a picture tells a thousand words, yeah, it, it does. But people want to connect with the photos that you take. You know, the whole part of marketing is that you're a problem solver, you, you're solving a problem of your clients and your clients are gonna be like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that I need that and that's why I wanna do it. Um, but copy is king, but, and also, but the content. So simple things that you need on your website. Like I, I've, I've, I've actually got a call with someone in 45 uh, minutes that we were redesigning their entire price list. Cause she's like, Mark, I've never sold Walla. I've never sold products. People don't buy products. Go to their website. There's not one product photo on there. There's no information about the products. Products is an afterthought. Products is like, you've done the whole experience. You've done the photography. They've got their digital files. And then they're like, um, do you want to buy some product and wall art? If you, know, if you want to, like it's there. So this is where there's a few pages on your website that is absolute no brainers. And these are the ones that you must, 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 must have. So these are just the pages, all right? So the pages is obviously you need a home page, so I don't need to write that. You need a gallery because people need to see what pictures that you're taking really easy. In your gallery, not in your frequently asked questions, not on another page, but in your gallery, you need the copy and information about the gallery you're talking about. Just think, if you look at newborn photos, what's the questions that they asked? You know, when do we come in for a newborn shoot? How much in advance do you need to book in? Does a baby need to be a week? Uh, a week. Um, how old does the baby have to be? Does the baby need to be awake? Does it need to sleep? Like put that information with the gallery and then put in a call to action on that page. The other one is the experience page. Now there might be a lot of photographers out there that have lots of pretty photos, but the experience is what people are really paying for. This is what they want. This is like, what is the Natalie Jane experience? What is the Isabella experience? You know, who else is here? Paula, what is the Paula experience? How does it work? Because if you're new to photography, you don't know that you're a full in-person sales, um, you've got a full studio. Like if you go to Natalie's studio, it's a full studio with props and dresses and gowns and the experience and the products and the quality and the one percentage she does is amazing. Like they don't know that. So you need to do that experience. And the biggest advantage, the biggest thing that I just will preach to the cows come home is that you need a video. Now call it a welcome video, a studio tour or anything. Because just by watching that video, they will know all about you in that one to two to three minutes. They'll know who you are and what you do and what you're passionate about. They'll warm to you, they'll connect with you. Like that you're showing off your space, your showcase, your wall art, your products, your studio space, your outdoor area, how you interact with people, your personality, everything in that video. And it'll save you hours of time. The next one is a products page. Products page is like going through, like what is a canvas? What is a metal print? What is a boxed uh, metal print? What's a portfolio box and albums and fine art albums and like what is all this stuff as well? It's really super important. Then you need to do a like um, a buy now, uh, book online, whatever it is. So really you need to make your website like a book. Home page is your front cover. Then you wanna direct them to a gallery from pretty pictures. These are the pretty pictures we take. This is the experience of how we take the pretty pictures. The products is what the pretty pictures go into and how to book in to have the experience as well. So they're like the four main pages that I recommend that you have. Isabel, how do we know if we outprice ourselves I've also been told a couple times recently from both leads and clients that they have had price in mind which is lower than what I charge, like 300, 500,000 for all the digitals. You are always forever going to be questioned about price and products and service and all the rest of it, all right? Always, 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 always. And this is the difference between trying to show the value and the quality and the service and the products for everything that you do. 
The one thing that you do need to do is when you create your website and when you create your price list and your products, um, oh, I should write, write, find your flow. I'll do it with this part next. Is, okay, let's go here, all right? Right in, so from the, the website, content is king, number four, number five, find your flow. So right information, and this is a big one, all right? Give the right information at the right time. That's what I suggest, Isabel. Right info, right time. Let's write that. Right info, right time. What that means is that you don't want to outprice yourself. You don't want to give too much too early because they won't understand what you're doing because um, they don't understand the service. So just think when you go to, I don't know, a car yard. Let's just say a car yard. Let's just say cars because cars is a bigger purchase, right? You've got your standard model, which is what their prices start from. And then you've got all your extras and upgrades that are going to cost you a lot more. But in the showroom, they show the best car. They show the best premium stuff. So this is a part where it's like, you know, products start from $150, which is a matted print, right? Products start from $150. Finished prints, which is your desktop, start at $250. Your wall art starts at 350 your wall collection start at 750 and um your your, your album started a thousand or something like that so because if you were to give them a price list something like this let me just go to my little folder of goodies let's just use this one. Oh, let's go this one if you were to give them they've inquired or you put on your website a full price list, just like so, right? They don't know what a keepsake box or keepsake album is or an heirloom box or an heirloom album. What the hell's an heirloom album or an heirloom box? And what's an 11 by 14 inch matted prints? What is that? What's a slideshow? What kind of slideshow is it? Like, it's too much information at the wrong time. So it's really important that you you give them enough information to see that it's in their budget and then from there you speak to them and you coordinate with them and you show the value of what you do and how it works. Isabel, you will always find people that say it's too expensive and you'll always find people that is uh, worth it. Now, Isabel, you're in, you're in Darwin, aren't you? I think you're in Darwin. I'm sure you're in Darwin. 100% you're in Darwin. Isabel, can you confirm that? The reason why I say that is because every area has cheap photographers and expensive photographers. They have cheap houses and expensive houses. Yes, Isabel Darwin, perfect. You know, remember Alison Cole, boudoir for photographer, starting price three and a half thousand dollars in Darwin, who's now moved to Melbourne. Like, for so many people that was out of the price range, but for so many people that she was worth every cent, which she is it she is worth every cent. So you're gonna have a mix of people. So find your flow. What you need to then do, if you've spent all this time getting your website, your images, your business models, your products, your prices, you need to make sure that you find your flow in terms of when you get an inquiry, you need to make sure that you know what you're doing with the inquiry, when you're doing it, what information they get, at the right time, at the right place, there's a portrait one and there's the wedding one, that you're giving the right information at the right time, that your experience is clean and understood and refined and processed. Think about all those wildly successful businesses out, out there. They have a system, a process, and a workflow. Hello, Kelly Box, welcome to the show. They have a system, a workflow, a process that they refine every client. If they have great clients, they sit back and they go, why, well, well I would be as the owner. Why was that client so good? Why, what was, what was it that that client did that made that client awesome? And why was that client not my ideal client? 
Who were they? Where were they from? What part of the process, what part of the system made them not the perfect client? And then what you would do is take all the good parts of the good clients, put those into your workflow because you've realized that you've got a higher average uh, sale if you get your clients to take a photo of the wall that they want to put the, the art work on. You realize that you've got a higher conversion rate when you speak to the client, so you should call them more often. You also realize that you get a better client response when you DM a few times first and then you call them. And you've also realized that your average sales sucks for clients that you have not connected with. They only text, they only email, they don't communicate, there's no phone call, and they turn up unprepared. So what can you do to make that not happen again? So in terms of Photography Business 101, you need to find your flow. You need to make sure that you're doing the right things, the right information at the right time that is going to best advantage you, the photographer, okay? So um, that's the biggest recommendation for you. Isabel, that's correct. Give the, when you give the full price list when they inquire, again, I wouldn't itemize it like I showed you, not that itemized. I would make it into a four, five, six, eight page um, PDF document with pictures and education throughout it all as well. Check out the um, Systems and Workflow Mastery, Isabel. Um, check out the Calls That Convert course on the PBBN, um, the members page, or um, the Photography Business Blueprint, or the um, Supercharge the website. It's all the same kind of information in the same spot. All right, number six, creating an offer. So this is what you're talking about as well, Isabel. This is a lot for you today. Creating an offer. So again, for those people that have done master your marketing, you're all over this about how to craft the perfect offer and how to make it engaging and how to book in clients and how to give the right information at the right time. And we've gone through all of this. <clears throat> those new to me, new to photography business coaching, new to photography business in general. Generally, generally, if you're new to the photography industry, your create an offer looks like this. Shoot fee, $200 and book now. That's your create an offer. That's probably where most people start. You've got a shoot fee and they book in and it's $200. Because your time is valuable. Your time is worth it. I get all of that. But at the same time, what do you get for 200 bucks? And if you say my time and talent, I will slap you. <laughs> your time, your talent, your camera, your insurance for your camera. No one gives a shit about your insurance for your camera and your time and talent. Especially in Australia, if, if anything, people want to be like, so what do I get for that? What value do I get? Is that all I get? That doesn't make sense type thing. So when it comes to your shoot fee, it's not about, and I say this all the time, it's not about how much you make at the start, right? If you've got an average order, AVO, if you've got an average order of say $1,500, let's just say that because it's easier, right? It's not about the $200 that you're gonna make from the shoot fee, it's about the $1,500 you're gonna make from the sale afterwards, okay? So, reduce the barrier for creating an offer. Give them some value. So, but it's all around how you write this. So you might say that your shoot fee is worth $200, right? Let's simplify this really easy, okay? and you get credit of $100 to put towards any additional wall art. So the total value is $300, but on your website and when you speak to people and it's January the 30th, so I would say we had an Australia Day offer last week that it's you get your shoot for 200, your credit for $100, total value is 300, but it was on sale on Australia Day for $95, all right? Then your average order is still 1500. But if you're a photographer 
write in the comments here, right? If, if you're a client looking for a photographer, are you going to choose photographer A or photographer B? Write in the comments. I'm looking for a photographer. The shoot fee is $200 for photographer A. It gives, gives you nothing. Now you love both photographers, you love both images, you love both websites, you love both products, you've spoken to both uh, photographers, but which one would you actually choose? Photographer A, a $200 shoot fee, or photographer B, because it looks like that there's more value? Thank you, Tallybots, for playing my game, photographer B. For the other number of people that are watching this that are silent in the background, please participate. It would make my job a little bit easier to help connect with you and understand what your thought process is. Anna, thank you, photographer B. Sarah, thank you, photographer B. Natalie Jane, photographer B, thank you very much. Thanks for playing. So you can see that like, it's not about the money you make at the start, it's the money you make at the end, okay? Emily, I'm glad you're enjoying watching this, all right? So, but a lot of new photographers don't even understand, a lot of photographers these days don't understand this concept of crafting an offer, all right? Because it's the way that they write the value. So now, here's the other way of not to do it by going, I'm a cheap photographer and my shoot fee is $95. Okay, so it's cheaper, but I'm still not getting anything for it. You'll still choose photographer B, but you wanna make a no-brainer offer, Emily. You wanna make it so you look at it and go, oh, that's an awesome offer. Emily, write down where you're from, because I don't think we've met before. But you want to write down, like, um, you want to see what the offer is. You want to know what the deal is. You want to know what you're coming into. You want to know what you're experiencing. You want to know what you get. Otherwise, you just don't know. So when you're, cre cre when, when you're creating an offer, create it in a way that's going to make sense and understand it so that the client goes, oh, I understand what I'm getting myself into. Because at the moment, how many businesses are there out there, there's so many, where you actually don't know what you're getting. And they're not very clear, it's a bit vague. Brisbane, ah, oh, cool. Um, it's very wet in Brisbane today, very wet. Um, they don't really know what they're getting. So it's our job to really make sure that photography is clear, because the confused mind says no, so we wanna make this simplified, all right? Number seven, what am I up to? How to make money out of photography. Oh my gosh, how to make money out of photography is the answer to all of your questions, isn't it? How do I make money out of this? A, we go back to the business models, products and price list, okay? But how to make money out of photography is that you need to make sure that all your ducks are in a line. You need to make sure that you've got a sustainable photography business. You need to make sure like you can't just take pretty photos and expect to make a business out of this. Can't expect just to put up a website and be like, oh, Mark, I get this all the time. I get this more often than what you think, actually. All the time. Mark, I've been in business for a year now, maybe two, one or two years. I've just, I just can't get clients. Well, what are you doing to get clients? Well, I've got a website. Yeah, but what are you doing to get clients? Well, I've got Instagram. Yeah, but what are you doing to get clients? I've also got a Facebook page. Okay, but what are you doing? Like, what are you actually, what are you doing to get clients? Oh, I did a Facebook ad. Okay, you've got the wrong business model with the wrong products and the wrong price list and you're spending money on Facebook ads to go to a website that's got no content on it to convert your clients in the first place and you're wondering why you're not making money out of your photography business. And you just go, right, this is a pain in the butt. This is, this is tough. Um, is there a masterclass interview on how to create your business model? Uh, Paula, it's the, it's a sprint class called um, the Photography Business Blueprint. Go onto my Mark Rosetto coaching website and it's in there. Photography Business Blueprint. Um, and you just go, and you just go, this is why you're not making money as a photographer because a lot of photographers, especially starting out, will be like, I wanna be a photographer. 
They get a camera, they get a computer, they get their photos, they take photos of their kids, they take photos of families, and someone goes, you know what, you take a really good photo, you should be a photographer, can you photograph my kids? And then they photograph someone else's kids, and then they photograph someone else's kids, and then boom, they make an Instagram page, and then they get busy enough that they go, I wanna make a business out of this. And then they get nowhere else. So you have to be, when you're, uh, you need to look at your business holistically. So I'm gonna give you another course that I've got. This one's completely free, so don't freak out. And a lot of you have done this. Kelly Box, you're gonna slap me because you've done this probably 20 times over the last four years. This one is called the Photography Business Benchmark. What it does, and I always send people to this course because I just think this is just, I just think it's awesome. <laughs> just saying, I think it's awesome. Um, because I've taught this all over the world. I've taught this at, in the UK, New Zealand, America, and it covers the eight key components on what makes a successful photography business and breaking it out into eight components will help you understand of what's going right and what's going wrong and where you're falling short and what you're really good at. And just quickly, the eight components are the environment where you meet your clients, your price and products, your phone calls and connecting with your clients, your photography, your marketing, the one percenters, systems and workflow, and the rapport building skills and connecting with your clients. They all make a difference. If you are lacking in one of those spots, I can tell you now your business is probably going to struggle. I would prefer you to be mediocre, like a three to four to five in all of them consistently, then be an eight to 10 in majority and then a really low two or three in one or two of them. I can tell you now, they're not going to work. People like Natalie Jane, I can tell you very confidently because I've known that for many years, she will sit as an eight to 10 in pretty much every single component, which is why she's been in business for 20 plus years, which is why she's a rock star, which is why she is a referral passive marketing queen. So if you want to make money out of photography, you need to look at those eight core areas and you need to make it work for you as well. I knew that would make you laugh, Kelly. Um, just in the comments, write yes or no if you've actually done that photography business benchmark course. It's a wheel, it looks like this. <laughs> Natalie, yes. Um, yes or no, I just want to know. Yes or no, have you done the photography business benchmark course, yes or no? because I can tell you now, I love that course. I will go through that course time and time again with photographers over and over again like Kelly, because we wanna see the development over the years and what she needs to work on or not. Sarah, I highly recommend it. Anna, I highly recommend it. Jess, I highly recommend it. And Isabella, definitely do it again. Uh, Kelly, can you do me a favor? Can you jump on my website and post the link for that? Just, if you can, that'd be awesome. If not, I'll do it later. All right. Three more to go, and I'm gonna wrap these ones up a bit faster because we've been here for quite a while, but it's all good. And I definitely do it this week. It'll, mate, it'll, it'll change the way you look at your business forever. Like literally, it literally changes the way that you engage with your business and helps you understand what you need to work on. Talk about engagement, rules of engagement, connecting with your people. I, you will hear me and Kylie this year a lot, a lot. I'm talking about like this is one of our major overarching things for this year is relationships are going to be key for your business in 2024. Now, you might have seen that I'm doing a little bit of a social media experiment for the photography industry that I asked on my personal page. Thank you very much, Isabel. Um, that I did on my, that I've asked to do. Um, and I'm gonna tell you those results in the webinar that we're gonna do next week with Kylie. But rules of engagement, connecting with your people is gonna be really, really key. Relationship building, connecting. Because what's happening, there's always been a flood of photographers, always oversaturated. You hear about it for the last freaking 20 years, 30 years since being a photographer, you'll hear about it all the time. Nothing is really changed and nothing's going to change. If it's anything, it's gonna get worse. There's gonna be more photographers because photography is becoming easy and easier because they're using their iPhones as a freaking camera. And then they've got things like a GoPro, which is just the coolest invention ever, which I've just discovered. Um, but um, 
now I've lost my train of thought. What if you're not family anymore but want to do boudoir? Yes, the same benchmark course. It's the same thing, Jess, for everybody, if that's a question. Um, yes, it doesn't really matter. It's same, same, but different. You're still connecting with people. So the rules of engagement, build relationships with people. That's what I'm trying to say. Connect with people, building relationships with people. You're going to get a flutter, a, a flurry of inquiries from different places. And I can tell you now, the ones that you're going to book are the ones that you connect with. The ones that you don't book are the ones that you don't connect with. Similar to find your flow, what's going right with clients, what's going wrong with clients meet them on their level so how i suggest with rules of engagement to connect with your people is to do something similar to this so uh meet meet in their zone no not meet let's change the word chat in their zone so if you're chatting on Facebook, they're chatting on Facebook. If you're chatting on Instagram, you're chatting on Instagram. If you're chatting on, on email, you're chatting on email. If it's a text message, text message. You're like meet in their zone, right? Wherever they are, have a chat with them. But as soon as this is you, right? Let's do this again. It's more fun doing this way. This is you holding a camera. This is you. And this is your client, right? Asking questions. As soon as you, they chat to you once, you chat to them back, they chat again, you chat to them back two or th three times. They chat to you again and chat back within a short period of time. Let's just say a couple of minutes. It could be a couple of minutes. It could be within the hour. As soon as you've gone chat, 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 you go, let's talk, call, all right? Invite them to have a conversation. Hey, this would be so much easier if we just have a, do you have a spare five minutes to have a quick phone call? Otherwise, we'll be chatting like this all day. Do you have a quick five minutes to have a chat on the phone or are you available for a quick ch chat now? Can I give you a quick call to talk you through this? I'd love to chat to you. Hey, Han, I hope that you're doing well. Um, look, it sounds like you've got a few extra questions. This will be so much easier to answer on the phone as I'm not very good with texting. Whatever it is. But the rules of engagement is like chat, question, 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 talk. I can tell you now, if you're just question, 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 don't talk, send you a link to an online booking and hope that they pay money and then hope that they're educated enough to turn up to then spend thousands of dollars on your artwork, I think you're gonna be kidding yourself, okay? So it's really important that you engage with your clients. How to book, how to get clients to book, number nine, that's that as well. Like you need to encourage them, but you need to make it easy for them to book. They can book online, they can call you, but you've had a conversation first. So once you've had, the chat, right? Chat. In that chat, in that conversation that you've had, you've got options, right? Book on the call. They'll either just book with you straight away, right? Um, follow up. You need to follow up with them within a few days. Online booking. Now, contradictory, online booking's fine because you've chatted to them already. You're not going from the text messages straight down to booking online and they don't know what they're booking for. You've already had the conversation. So when you follow up, you also encourage them to book online because otherwise the phone call's like, hey, it's Mark again. Hey, Nat, it's Mark. So um, just wanna see if you're ready to book yet? No, I'm not. Okay, no worries, let me know when you're ready. Hey, Nat's Mark, uh, so yeah, I'm just following up. Did you, you know, have you had a look at the and you want to book yet? Uh, no. Okay, no, like it just gets awkward. So now you can send a text message to go, hey, just wanted to follow up or an email with the booking. But when you're sending the text message and email, there's so much more to it. But you send like links to your website and blogs and help them make decisions and all that type of stuff as well. So yeah, so there's a few more extra things with that. Oh, thanks, Anna. I like to think that I was right. <laughs> I like to think I've learnt a lot over the last nine years of being a coach. 
<laughs> so you just gotta connect with people. All right, where are we up to? Last one, number 10. Photography Business 101. Competition. Community over competition. Wouldn't face-to-face -face be better? For Absolutely, Jess. Face-to-face -face would be totally better if you're available face-to-face, -face, if they can meet face-to-face. -face. This is the part going back to, I don't know if you jumped on early with the business models, with the right business models, products and prices, but the business model, if your business model allows you to do face-to-face, -face, absolutely face-to-face, -face. but if your business model does not allow you to do face-to-face -face because you work full-time or you work part-time, or if you've got young kids or they're busy, you're busy, like absolutely, if you can do face-to-face, -face, do face-to-face. -face. But if you can't, then do Zoom. If you can't, then do a phone call. If you can't, then do text message, do email. But I can tell you now the overall quality of your client will drop with the less contact that you, quality contact that you have. But yes, face-to-face -face would be the best. Community over competition. There's always gonna be competition. But the best part is there's always community too. This is getting down to iron sharpens iron. This is getting down to being around people that are successful. If you're new to the photography, uh, professional photography business network, this used to be called the photography business coach, which was me. I'm the photography business coach. We changed it to the professional photography business network about two years ago. And then we changed the branding and we've gone to this professional photography business network information hub of photographers from all around the world who are awesome at what they do. Why learn from one when you can learn from a heap of a many people? Why learn from one when you can learn from a many? There's so many amazing photographers here. And Natalie Howe, Kelly Box, you guys are amazing because I know you both exceptionally well. Isabella, you've grown so much over the last few years. It's been absolutely phenomenal to watch you do what you do. So that whole professional photography business network, this is a great place to learn to ask questions. But please, if you're gonna be asking questions and if you wanna be learning, ask business question. I don't, we're not asking questions about critique this image or can you have a look at this retouching still? It's businessy stuff that you need help with, okay? Ask the questions, because I can tell you now, there's not a lot of stuff that we haven't seen in the past that we're not implementing moving forward, all right? And if I don't have the answer for you, there's people within this community that will get the answer. Now, if you wanna take it to the next stage, join the Professional Photography Business Network members group. There is so much content in that page. It's ridiculous. If you've got a question about anything, we've probably got a class. We've got a PBBN TV interview. We've got a master class. We've got a toolkit. And we've got live training that covers probably majority of the questions that you're asking. Not only that, the competition, community over competition, make it in your diary that you come and meet with us too much content, you get lost sometimes. It's a good problem to have. Um, make it a point in your diary that you do the live training calls with us every fortnight from 9.30 till 10.30 on a Monday morning and you just connect. Just sit and bask in the ambience of fun photographers learning something new. You'll pick up the one percenters, you'll pick up little things, but put it in your diary. like. Business is not meant to be lonely. Business is not meant to be boring. Everything that you're probably struggling with right now in your head has been answered by someone else before in the past. So don't learn by yourself. Bullshit. You can go from zero to hero photography within 12 months, 18 months. You can go from nothing to over 100 grand. I've done it. I've coached people doing it as well. But you've got to just those eight components of the business of, of, of this, of this, that eight components, you gotta work at it and you gotta make sure that you get your shit happening. All right. So that's all for me today. There you go. 54 minutes. That's a lot of minutes of talking, but there's just some photography business 101 for lots of people. And for some people need to hear it again. If you need help with anything, please reach out to me. Happy to do coaching with you. Happy to have a chat with you. Happy to have a phone call with you. Happy to give you a kick up the ass, Miss Kelly, Kelly Box. Happy just to make sure you're moving in the right direction. 
if I don't know the answer, I know people that know the answer. It's this whole community over competition. Don't make this hard on yourself and don't make this go round in circles for you. The idea is to get you from A to B as quick as possible, okay? So we need to make sure that we are moving and it's easier to move together. I, I, last year I was saying this a lot. Let's be the tide that raises all ships. If we can get all photographers raising the quality and service at the same time, it's going to be better for everybody. All right? That's all I have to say about that. Have an awesome day. Enjoy your Tuesday. And I will speak to you or anybody who wants to have a chat because I'm always up for a chat anytime soon. I hope that helps. I hope that's given you some sort of inspired part of information. But um, I just hope that, you know, we're going in the right direction with stuff. Speak to you shortly. Bye-bye.